Well, hello there. New Melon Design here with another video from the series called uh, Video Tutorials, where I'll show you video settings for my final renders. In this type of tutorial, I'll focus on things like depth of field, camera angles, camera movement, and so on. So in case you're looking for full render settings for this project, I'll post a link in the top right corner. But for now, let's start with our first uh, clip that you can see in here. Uh, I'm using a wide angle camera and the camera movement is orbiting shot around the house. Let's open up the depth of field. Straight away you can spot a large amount of blur that I'm using and I'm pushing it towards the foreground. So the immediate foreground will be extremely blurred, as you can see in here, and the background as well, which will make the main portion of the house nice and sharp. Moving on to our second clip. In here the, the camera angle is a little tighter. We're using a medium shot and the camera movement is from uh, left to right and it is a tracking shot to reveal this front portion of the house. Let's open up the depth of field, pretty much the same amount of blur and we're pushing uh, towards the foreground so the immediate foreground will be extremely blurred as well as the background which will keep our attention on this car in our case and the front portion of the house. Next clip in here we're using the very interesting vertigo or a dolly zoom shot. As you can see in here, the, um, the surroundings of the house uh, are warping or changing perspective and the house pretty much stays the same. I'll quickly show you how to set it up. First, uh, you set up your first frame away from your model or house in our case and you choose a higher uh, number angle which is towards the uh, medium type of shot, 30 mil in here. And then you move your camera closer to the house and change the camera angle to extreme wide angle, in our case, 17 mil. Okay, so in here we have two uh, different clips. The point is to keep the size of your model pretty much the same. I'm using this, uh, this column in here as a reference point from, from the edge. As you can see, it's not perfect, but it is close enough. And when you confirm, you get the, the vertigo or a dolly zoom uh, shot, as you can see in here. So let's open up the depth of field. Once again, a large amount of blur pushed towards the foreground, the focus is on our house. So the immediate foreground will be extremely blurred and so will be at the background and the main portion of the house will stay sharp. Next clip, I believe is this one, yep. In here we're using a wide angle camera and the camera movement is orbiting shot around the house coming from behind this rock. As you can see the focus in the beginning of the clip is on the rock and later on we're shifting it on the house. So when we open up the depth of field straight away there are two keyframes in here. So the foreground and the focus distance is keyframed to be able to shift the focus from the rock in the beginning of the clip to the house later on in the clip. Next up, this is our, another clip. In here we're using a wide angle camera and the camera movement is a tracking shot from left to right. And we are revealing this uh, patio or pool area at the back of the house. Let's open up the depth of field. Once again, the uh, large amount of blur pushed towards the foreground. So the foreground will be blurred, a little bit of the background and the focus will be on this uh, back of the house area. Next clip. Here we're using once again wide angle shot, but we're changing the camera movement and this is a boom or a crane shot. It is a vertical movement of the camera. When we open up the depth of field straight away, we can see uh, we get a couple of keyframes on the timeline once again. So we are changing or shifting the focusing distance. In here we are starting on this bedroom, in here, and later on moving towards the furniture uh, at the back of the house, in here on the open, in the open area. Now we're moving to the interior. This is our next uh, clip. We're using a medium type of shot, and the camera movement is a tracking shot from right to left to reveal this living room uh, area behind it. So let's open up the depth of field. 
we lowered the amount of blur as you can see in here and also we pushed a little bit uh, the uh, foreground background slider towards the middle so the foreground is not so extremely blurred so we can still see what is happening in the foreground and we can tell that this is a fireplace but still the focus is uh, on our main uh, portion of the living room the sofa and the wall behind it next up next clip we are still staying uh, in the interior in here this is a very uh, wide angle camera that would you you would normally use for the interiors because of a lack of space obviously so we're using uh, a pan pan type of shot from right to left where the camera is static and it's just uh, moving or orbiting around its Z axis so in here we are let's open up the depth of field once again the, the blur amount of blur is somewhere in the middle so large amount but we moved it towards the background so anything in the foreground and the main uh, portion of uh, our interest which is the living room is sharp and in here as you can see the outside area is blurred so that's how you get it with this uh, foreground and the background slider all the way to the background moving on to our next clip here we have a wide angle camera once again for the interior and the camera movement is a tracking shot from left to right to reveal the whole uh, whole uh, living room area and also uh, this uh, pool in front the infinity pool a little bit of the view from the living room let's open up the depth of field we lowered a little bit uh, the amount of blur and again we moved or pushed it towards the foreground which means the edge of the sofa will be out of focus which is not interested or important for us and the focus distance is on this uh, chandelier or the lights in here uh, towards the windows and anything behind it will stay sharp and basically in focus and we're getting to to our last clip which is a very a wide angle shot as you can see in here and we're using a dolly uh, move of the camera so the camera is moving away from our model thus revealing the the whole house and the area around it which is very nice for our closing shot let's open up the depth of field once again we're using a, a pretty much the same amount of blur as in the previous clip and we keep it on the foreground as well the focusing distance is set uh, automatically on the house which means it will stay sharp throughout the clip and the immediate foreground will be a little bit out of focus so there we have it our last and closing clip so thanks for watching guys stay well and stay creative